Let's have a quick look at how to eliminate rational coefficients in equations. If you don't want to work with either fractions or decimals in your equation, there are times when you can eliminate those rational coefficients and work with a slightly different equation. There are times when you can eliminate either those fractions or decimals and work with a slightly different version of that same equation. Let's go through it. Here's an example with fractional coefficients. There are times when you need to leave those fractions in, and there's times where they actually just get in the way. So let's change this equation so that it doesn't have those fractions anymore. Now this only works in equations. If it doesn't have that equal sign, we can't just multiply one side or the other and get rid of the fractions. It has to be an equation. And that's actually what we're going to do, is we're going to multiply both sides by something that eliminates those fractions. So my first step is I want to find my lowest common denominator. So the lowest common denominator of 5, 3, and 6 is actually going to be 30. Next, I'm going to multiply each term by 30. I'm going to take this, I'm going to times it by 30. I'm going to take this term, times it by 30. I'm going to take this term, times it by 30. I want you to be careful when you write, because this piece right here looks like I'm writing 1 6 to the power of 30. And we're not doing that, we're actually multiplying. So be very clear and careful when you're writing this down. All right, let's work with those numbers. I'm going to do some simplifying. I've got a 30 on the top and the 5 on the bottom. So if I, do, I can divide 5 into both of those. 5 goes into there once, and 5 goes into there 6 times. My second term, I've got a 3 on the bottom and a 30 on the top. I can take a 3 into that, goes into there 1 time, 3 goes into there 10 times. And the last term here, I've got a 6 on the bottom, 6 goes into there once, and 6 goes into there 5 times. So what I'm going to do now is I will multiply that out. I will do that 6 times 4, 10 times 2, and 5 times 1. So 6 times 4 gives me 24x. I've got a 1 on the bottom, and I don't need to bother writing that in. My next term, 10 times 2 gives me 20. I've still got my y, but my equal sign, and on the other side, I've got 5 times 1 equals 5. I now have essentially the same equation without the rational coefficients. It will draw the same line on a graph, but it's a little bit easier to work with. Let's take a look at getting rid of the decimal coefficients. Now decimals and fractions are just different ways of, draw, of writing the same thing. So I'm going to use the same method. I'm going to find something to multiply it by. When we're looking at this, trying to decide what am I going to multiply both sides by, look for the coefficient with the most decimal places. This one has three decimal places. Because it's got three decimal places, that tells me I'm going to multiply everything, every term, by 1,000. Essentially, one zero for every decimal place. When I multiply those out, 0.12 times 1,000 gives me 120x. Minus 0.9 times 1,000 is going to give me 900y and 0 0.003 times 1,000 is just going to give me 3. No more decimals in my equation. And once again, that is still going to draw the same line. It is still the same equation, just with different coefficients. 